this video is all going to be about indexing in R. Now that name might not mean much, but by the end of the video it should. We're going to start out relatively simple and just declare a vector x that consists of the integers from 10 to 1. Throughout this video, I'm going to assign, that is, make statements like this, a lot of variables in R. And if I don't explicitly print them and you need to know what they are, you should evaluate the code and then come in the console and print it out like I just did so that you can see the contents of whatever variable I might assign. So indexing is basically like this. You can ask for the first element of the vector x. So the square brackets should almost be read as extract from x the first element. And so that will just give us the element number 10, since that is the first. And that wasn't so bad. You can also assign into the first element of x. And so now if you look at the first element of x again, you get 100 this time instead of 10, because you literally overwrote the value in the first position of the vector named x with the value 100. OK, that's pretty good. So what if you created a variable I like to call idx? And in my mind, it stands for index, because we are indexing the vector x with it. So I'm just going to make it 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, it turns out you can extract the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth elements from the vector x using this same syntax. You now put in an entire vector within the square brackets, and it pulls out the elements of x indexed by the elements of idx itself. So that gives you that, as you might suspect. 9 is the second element of x. 7 is the fourth. 5 is the sixth. 3 is the eighth. And 1 is the tenth element of x. You can get fancy with your indexing, like if you put a negative in front of your numeric vector idx, it will, ex it will uh, return for you all the elements of x except for the ones indexed by the vector idx. It's almost easier just to see the result than not. So now it excluded the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth and returned everything else. It excluded the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth, and returned everything else. What remains is, remember, 100 overwrote the first element of x. So it, what remains is 100, 8, 6, 4, and 2. That's some pretty fancy indexing right there. It gets better. Let's create y to be a vector of idx times 11. I'm only multiplying it by 11 so you can see the effects of this next operation. Take x, index it by idx, and store into the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth elements of x the contents of y. Oh, this, one's, this one is magical. Look at that. Indexing in modern programming languages is an incredibly powerful tool once you understand what's going on. Before you understand what's going on, it can be maddening. So I've tried to simplify the concepts in this short video. I encourage you to watch this again, practice on your own, create an example that makes sense to you, and if you need confirmation, please join me in office hours and ask.